In my practice, I see many patients who have shoulder and elbow pain. As we discuss the treatment options, the subject of cortisone injections often comes up. Quite a few patients are interested in getting these types of shots, or they have already had them before coming to see me. This topic can be really nuanced though, and I want to share how I think about cortisone shots and their place in our care pathways. If you're new here, welcome to the Shoulder and Arm Health channel where we discuss the latest and best in upper limb care. So is cortisone bad for you? In order to answer that question, we need to cover what cortisone is and how it works. Cortisone injections go by several names such as steroid shots or glucocorticoid injections. These injections involve placing a man-made version of a steroid hormone your body naturally makes called cortisol. There are various commercially available preparations such as dexamethasone, celestone or betamethasone, kenalog or triamcinolone. They all represent a concentrated version of the stress hormone your body makes. Cortisone injections inhibit the inflammatory pathways of your body by suppressing the production of cell signaling molecules that normally appear in response to the TNF-alpha and the interleukin-1 and 6 inflammation pathways. Cortisone also increases gene expression of molecules that downregulate production of prostaglandins. If this is starting to sound too technical, it might help to know that prostaglandins are also targeted by popular anti-inflammatories like Aleve or Motrin. Cortisone blocks the inflammation pathway much further upstream though, leading to more anti-inflammatory effects and some unwanted side effects. But taken together, all of these effects add up to a significant reduction in inflammation. Since the injections are made with a depot preparation, they tend to last in your body for well over a month. So compared to like taking a daily medication like Aleve or Motrin, the anti-inflammatory effects of a cortisone injection can last much longer. Obviously, this can be a desirable when you want longer lasting pain relief from joint or tendon related pain. This would explain the popularity of their use. So is cortisone bad for you? You may have heard that cortisone or cortisol is not good for you in general. There's a popular trend toward reducing stress and other things that raise your body's cortisol levels. This is sensible since long-term stress and high cortisol levels have undesirable effects on your blood pressure, weight, and disease fighting ability. When injected for musculoskeletal conditions, cortisone can cause some local side effects like skin discoloration or a fat atrophy or a painful histamine flare. There can also be systemic effects such as an increase of your blood sugar, which is a concern in diabetics. These systemic effects also include a suppression of the immune system, although it's less pronounced when the medicine is injected into a joint compared to like when you get the IV or pill form of the medication. There's also some concern about osteoporosis with long-term steroid use. When placed directly into an arthritic joint, cortisone has been shown to reduce cartilage volume. A well-done study published in JAMA in 2017 found that arthritic knees injected with cortisone over a two-year time period lost double the cartilage thickness compared to knees injected with plain saline. This is concerning, especially since the treatment may actually worsen the disease we're trying to treat. What about tendons? In animal studies, cortisone injections reduce tendon strength, volume, as well as the ultimate strength or load to failure. These are clearly bad effects. They also reduce scar formation and adhesions, which could be a good thing in certain situations. There are many case reports though of tendon ruptures after cortisone injections. Most notable are Achilles and tricep tendon ruptures, leading most doctors to avoid injecting those areas altogether. Another issue has to do with surgery. Those who get surgery within three to six months of a cortisone injection are more likely to have a complication, such as an infection or failure of tendons to heal. So what is the verdict? Cortisone shots clearly have many side effects that patients should be aware of. In my practice, I try to minimize the number of cortisone injections in any body part due to concerns about cartilage or tendon damage. However, cortisone injections are not all bad. Among other things, cortisone injections can be helpful in breaking a vicious cycle of inflammation. One particular condition that seems to respond well to cortisone injections is adhesive capsulitis, also known as frozen shoulder. With frozen shoulder, we are treating very stiff and thickened ligaments. So if cortisone causes the ligaments to thin out a bit and weaken, it could actually be helpful. So in a few situations, I still recommend cortisone injections. However, in most cases, I prefer other options such as hyaluronic acid or platelet-rich plasma. In addition to regulating inflammation, those types of injections can help build and maintain tendons and the linings of your joint. In a future video, I will discuss hyaluronic acid and how I use it in my practice. Please subscribe to the channel if you're interested in learning about the best and latest in shoulder and arm care. Please share and like as well so more people can benefit from learning.